Mm -hmm. Welcome back, but another question's arised. What about a good soft kit? And what about a good actual full armor kit? Well, those two questions I'll have to answer in two separate videos, but I'm going to first answer the soft kit in this episode. Um, but before I can even get to that question, another question needs to be answered, and that's what's the impression you're going for? What's the kit you're wanting to do? Are you wanting to do a Roman kit? Well, there's three different sort of periods of Roman. You want to do Republic, uh, or very early Republic? Do you want to do a generic Roman kit? Do you want to do a late Roman kit? Um, do you want to do uh, an auxiliary setup? Um, you know, there's different ways to do that. Um, maybe Roman isn't your style. Maybe you want to do something with uh, more medievally. Well, what sort? <laughs> You got English, you got French, you got early medieval, high medieval, late medieval. Um, you got all sorts of stuff. And that's the question that needs to be answered first, whether you're buying a soft kit or whether you're buying a hard kit, you know, your fighting kit. And that's what is your time frame? What is the, the period that you're wanting to go for? And, of course, you want to do that correctly. Um, in SCA and to a small degree in ACL, they do allow for some customization. Um, in a ACL, it's pretty much apply your own paint scheme. <laughs> but in in uh, SCA, you're allowed you know a little bit more leeway um, to do what you would like. You don't need to be 110% historically accurate. You just have to be mostly accurate. Um, and I'm using mostly as a very broad term. Um, but overall, you want to get a soft kit first, and you want to first, before you get into that, figure out what your time frame is going to be. So I went for a very generic setup that I'm going to show you. And I always like doing a very generic setup. You can use it across all sorts of different time frames. And that's what I would also encourage, is that you get something that's very simple, very easy to do. And also, I'm going to show you a little bit of a cheat, too, um, to get away with... Uh, well, have a little bit of modern luxury in the uh, kit. So, first things first, my shirt. I went with a tunic. It's a very nice tunic. I like this tunic. And it even has some uh, some nice uh, stitching around the end. It's actually very, very glossy. Yeah, I, got I looked up on Amazon and got this on Amazon. Um, easy peasy. Nothing much to it. It's all red. There is some trimming at the bottom. That's pretty much it. It's all wrinkled too. But um, the boots, the boots were a little bit harder. Um, I didn't go with the Phantasma sort of boots or anything like that. I wanted something a little bit more, um, what's the term, survivalistic looking, um, as per the day. So here are my boots. I actually took some uh, Indian boots and I cut off the threads because it does have the actual uh, crisscross sort of style that you would you would see uh, with uh, most uh, lesser income people of the day. I mean, granted, you can, in SCA, you can get away with you know, having some really nice cool boots and stuff like that, but I prefer these. These will definitely do the job, but not in a fight. That's a, that's a lot of slip. <laughs> but, um, you know, uh, find some boots. The boots might probably be the harder bit kit but I sort of skipped over the pants and that's the part I want to get to see if the pants the pants that I wear or just some normal very big here uh, some normal uh, sweatpants that I just picked up at my local store now I'm getting away with these I'm able to get away with these because my tunic is so long it covers over the uh, button and the, the pouch in front. It also covers over the, the pockets and the side. Um, yeah, you can get some you know, pants that actually have pockets. I actually have a period correct um, uh, actual legit pants with um, yarn and the, uh, the wooden little bells on the tip to uh, tie it off instead of these stringy things. But I'm able to get around with these because my tunic covers over these. And that's another thing. If you're able to get away with something more modern and you feel comfortable with it, well, you're going to want to sort of cover over its farbiness, its incorrectness for your kit. Because 
you might have a really great kit. And even when it comes to fighting, you might have a really great uh, kit. Then you got a GoPro sort of sticking out the side. And, uh, man, come on. Uh, you, you spent how much money on that? And you sort of, yeah. Um, just, you know, you do a little cover up. And so, as I said, my tunic, my tunic, the bottom of my tunic, if I can find the bottom, the bottom of my tunic covers over the top of my pants. And so um, I can get away with these. And also at the very bottom of my, uh, of my pants, they go well into my boots. And so I'm able to get away with having some pockets and being a little bit more comfortable because my other period correct pants are pretty much wool and in this wonderful hot weather that we're having right now, it's not doing the job. <laughs> but um, yeah, you wanna first look at your period that you're going for. I went for something very generic, um, very sort of across the board. I know there's gonna be some historians that pick on me. They're like, hey, you shouldn't do that, you shouldn't do this. Um, <laughs> but it's very generic, very simple kit. Uh, but the more bells and whistles you want with your kit, with your soft kit, you're going to want with the more historical context. Um, so let's say you're wanting to do um, a noble, um, some sort of shogun noble um, from Japan, and you're mixing bits of that, his, what would be a soft kit, um, like his, his robe piece with a medieval knight. Um, you know, with a, you know, having a nice white belt and having some, you know, medieval looking like shoes, leather shoes, things are going to be off. You know, you're putting one side of the world with the other side of the world and they're not coming together. <laughs> they're not being nice and uniform. And that's what you want. Because the more uniformed you're going to be, the better it's going to be. Um, but at the same time, I have bits of my soft kit I can also use for my medieval fighting. As I say, with my pants, you know, no, they're not historically correct um, because they're modern, they're covered over. And I use some of my sweatpants and even light shirts, light, very breathable, you can still sort of see me, light, very breathable shirts while I'm fighting because I do have to wear, where is that? Oh, here it is. I do have to wear really thick padding. That's, that's, about as thick as my finger, um, you know, to help cushion the blows. And if I'm wearing such padding, I do want to have a very breathable underneath kit. And I am able to get away with wearing a very simple, breathable Star Wars shirt because it's being covered over. And so that's the takeaway from this, is if you do have something modern and you do have something that maybe doesn't shouldn't line up, well, you do want to be able to cover over it a little bit. Um, as for additional accessories, to, I do have a belt, a leather belt, which is somewhere around here. It's very simple. Um, it has just a ring on the end, goes through, wraps around, easy peasy. I do have a leather pouch, which I showed, oh, here it is actually, in my previous video. Very simple, easy peasy. Nothing to it, very generic. Um, but like I said, if you're going for a, a more specific style, you're going to want to essentially pull up a source, an actual uh, primary source, like a picture or um, some stained glass or a manuscript, whatever, a primary source, recording of the day, see how that person dressed, how that person looked, and you're gonna wanna go with that. And the plus side to that is, is that most historical documents, particularly when it comes to medieval, are going to be based on people who had a lot of money, a lot of wealth, because a lot of those people that had a lot of money and a lot of wealth were able to afford a lot of, you know, their armor being taken care of, and which still uh, exists today um, in museums, and a lot of, you know, um, just like I said, historical documents, because they could afford it. Um, very, you know, yeah, there might be some historical uh, documentation about, you know, a peasant's revolt or, um, you know, the king went and, you know, saw these crops and there was these people that were having to just be drawn in on the manuscript, too. That's nice, and you can definitely use that, but you won't have as many resources as you will if you're trying to go for a noble sort of setup. Um, if you're going for real fancy, you know, uh, having 
gold around your neck and bling on your fingers and all sorts of stuff. So, but yeah, that's the takeaway from this is you do want to get a soft kit because, you know, even with my soft kit, I'm able to use bits of it both outside the tournament for fun and inside the fighting ring. And, but before you can get into the soft kit, which should be your first kit, don't go straight for the armor, go for the soft kit first. And when you're having the soft kit, you need to first answer yourself a question, and that's what type of impression type of kit do I want? And on top of that, you want to make sure you're looking at some really good uh, sources, primary sources. In the SCA, in Armor Combat League, and uh, Society and Anachronism, and Pema, um, they, you know, there's people there um, to help you. Um, like I said, the hospitalers of the SCA, um, the marshals, and you know, uh, their their support on Facebook and whatnot. Some some good uh, groups out there too um, that will definitely be able to point you in the right direction. But it's always good to uh, you know, do a little bit of research yourself. Um, you know, there's plenty of YouTube videos out there, plenty of Google videos and whatnot um, to look up such content. It is the year 2017 already, but uh, you know technology's progressed, and the information's at the tip of your fingers right there. But other than that, yeah, the soft kit. Um, like I said, if you do have anything, you know, like a GoPro sticking out, or you have a microphone or something, you're trying to do some recording, and whatnot. Even if it is my recording, um, you know, put like a cloak over it. You know, if I have a microphone on. <clears throat> on my collar, you know, I can put this this hood on and to the most degree um, cover over it. So, I mean, modern technology and stuff like that. I even, before, one of my next videos is going to be about helmets because I do have a really nice hefty helmet, which you might have seen in the intro video. But I saw a person who actually had a helmet and had a welded on, <laughs> uh, uh, two pieces of metal welded on, and jammed in through the side was a GoPro. And so he had a first-person view of all the fighting he was going on. Yeah, that's ugly as can be, and that shouldn't be allowed. I don't believe that's allowed in the tournament. It should. Yeah, the correction. It isn't allowed in the tournament. I don't know, I'm think, really thinking about it, but you know, he's allowed to get. You know, he's allowed to get some content. But there's, it's really hard for a person in armor to get content in a ring. You know, because usually, where you gonna put a camera inside, inside your your helmet? <laughs> But, um, but yeah, you know, you always want to cover over um, some of the uh, historical inaccuracies, and uh, you know, always build up, you know, build up uh, the kit. And eventually, as you're building up and getting connected to people and whatnot, you're going to see well, bits of bits of armor that will go on sale, and that should be your next step. After you get your soft kit, after you get your impression set. Now you want to go ahead and get into hard kit. Now that's going to be a separate video because I'm already running uh, over my 10 minute mark for this video. But, <clears throat> and I will wear that full kit and go into details about my, my kit. Um, but uh, but yeah, you just want to get a soft kit first before you can progress into getting a hard kit. In the end, I'm going to reiterate what I said in my previous video here. Take your time, go slow, because if you don't, you're going to spend a whole lot more money than what you actually need to spend. You just got to be patient. And uh, all things will fall too. Other than that, that's the video about the soft kit. And uh, about some of the little bit of details about that. Um, I will have, a, I think, an airsoft video coming out here pretty soon. Along with plenty of gaming content. I know I've been a little lacking on that just recently. But, um, but yeah, I'll catch you all on the flip side.